good evening. This is MX24 News broadcasting from our studios at number 7 Oleander Street, Isligon, Accra. In 30 minutes, we'll serve you new stories making the rounds here in Ghana and around the world. My name is Adjoa Tinkrama. Please stay with her. Hello and welcome again. We begin from Parliament tonight and Speaker of Parliament Alban Bagwin has said there is need for investigations into a leaked audio that allegedly involved a plot to sack the Inspector General of Police, Dr. George Ikufu Dampare. This comes after a debate on the floor of the House on the leaked tape, which is purported to be a conversation between a member of the new Patriotic Party government and a high-ranking officer of the police service who said that without the IGP sacking, it will be difficult for a rigging of the upcoming elections. The Speaker, however, wants the Deputy Minority Leader, Amakofi Bua, who raised the urgent statement to, in writing, indicate the terms of the proposed investigations according to Parliament's standing orders. Alban Bagwin says this will guide him in determining how the investigations should be conducted. I think more questions have been raised than answers. There's the need for an investigation. But going by the standing orders, I have to give proper direction as to the nature, the type of investigation. And so going by the same standing order 72, the last sentence says, the terms of the proposed statement shall first be submitted to Mr. Speaker. So I will urge the maker of the agent statement to submit in writing the terms of the proposed statement which he just gave us notice. This will guide me to give the direction as to how the investigation or inquiry will be conducted by the appropriate committee of the House. And so I direct that a statement be submitted in writing to me to assist me perform my duties. Well, the Minister for the Interior, Ambrosari, who spoke on the floor of the House, said that even though he is not against an investigation of the leaked tape in principle, it should be put on record that a government that he is part of has no intention of either sucking the IGP or wrecking the elections. I have no difficulty in investigating the tapes, but I need to put it in context. And number one, the government is committed to free and fair election 2024. The government has no plan to sack IGP. And please, please. And we are sure that nothing will be allowed to disturb the peace from now until 2024. So, Mr. Mr. Speaker, to investigate the leaked stuff, I have no problem with it. Provided you are not linking it the way they are linking it. And even going on to say that we are behind the tape, most unfortunate. So, Mr. Speaker, investigating statements on media leaks, statements, anything that has the tendency to destroy the peace and security, I am for it. And let nobody go away thinking otherwise, except to say that they were making statements, presumptions that try to link it to elections. And I said that I don't want it to be linked. But yes, let every citizen in this country know that anything that appears on the social media, and they, a number of them are called on issues like that we have investigated them. So in principle to investigate social media leakages as far as it concerns security, I have no problem with it. 
Now, the year-on-year -year inflation for June 2023 has seen a marginal increase from 42.2% to 42.5%, representing Basis, the general prices of goods and services rather declined with 32.2% recorded in June as opposed to the 4.8% recorded in May 2023. For food inflation for the month of June, it stood at 54.2%, while non food inflation stood at 53.4%. However, the focus on calculating June's inflation were based on food, housing, and transport because according to the government statistician, Professor Samuel Kobna, in these three divisions contribute about 64.69% to the overall inflation. Now, while housing, electricity, and gas have their rates slowing down, there is a reverse parting for food and non-alcoholic beverages. Inflation for the month of June 2023 stood at 42.5%. This rate of inflation that was recorded for the month of June 2023 signifies a 0.3 percentage point difference between the rate that was recorded for May 2023 and June 2023. In May 2023, we saw a reversal of the downward trend that we started recording from January 2023, where May 2023 rate of inflation stood at 42.2%, and with a, with an increase of 0.3 percentage points in the month of June 2023, we recorded 42.5%. On a year-on-year -year basis, this simply means that between June 2022 and June 2023, general prices of goods and services have gone up by 42.5%. On a month-on-month basis, that is between May 2023 and June 2023, the indices respectively stood at 184.4 and 178.7. Given these two consumer price indices, month-on-month -month inflation for the month of June 2023 stood at 3.2%, indicating that general prices of goods and services between May and June 2023 went up by 3.2%. This signifies about a two-third fall in the rate that was recorded in May 2023, as the month-on-month -month inflation for May 2023 stood at 4.8%, so beginning to see a decline in the month-on-month -month inflation. We focus on food, housing, transport, given that these three divisions contribute about 74.6% to the overall inflation. The contribution of food overall was 54%, followed by housing, water, electricity, and gas, 11%, and transport, 8%. So if you put these three divisions together, their contribution to the overall inflation is about three quarters of that. So we focus on these three divisions and see their trends over the period of time, specifically from January to June 2023. While we see housing, water, electricity, and gas slowing down, that is the rate, the level of inflation is slowing down from 71.1% in the month of January 2023 to 49.2% in June 2020, 2023. We see a reverse pattern for food and non-alcoholic beverages from the month of March 2023 to June 2023. Specifically from April, June 2023, food inflation stood at 48.7%, and this has consistently risen in the last two months, rising to 51.8% in the month of May 2023, and further rising again to 54.2% in the month of June 2023. Now, away from that to Tamale, the Tamale Metropolitan Assembly, Tama, has begun the implementation of ISS for fecal sludge and bulk water supply monitoring system with a mobile application that will increase household access to save bulk water supply and pit emptying services within the Tamale Metropolis. The system is designed to provide solutions to decades-long uh, periods of household water and sanitation challenges in Tamale. There is more in this report. Speaking of the launch of the ISS Pool mobile app in Temale, the Metropolitan Chief Executive Officer of the Temale Metropolitan Assembly, Mr. Suli Salifu, said the rollout of this digital system was well thought through after a series of engagements for the extension of ISS Pool services to Temale. 
Mr. Salifu said the digital platform will enable the assembly to be able to track sanitation services rendered to the public and operator routes within the city to ensure conformity to the assembly bylaws and eliminate the incidence of citywide indiscriminate dumping of vehicle sludge. The system designed to provide a solution to take his of um, household water and sanitation challenges in Tamar, which includes difficult access to pit emptying services, unregulated disposal of fatal sludge, and guided service charge for pit emptying services, and on the other hand, a safe supply of bulk water to homes. Under this collaboration, the Tamar Metropolitan Assembly offers a unified solution to these challenges by Lakin households who receive safe pits emptying and bulk water supply services within the Tamil Metropolitan Assembly in the comfort of their homes. The Tamale mayor, however, urged the residents, landlords, companies, and other institutions within the metropolis to engage the services of only authorized agents of the assembly to carry out waste management services by the Tamale Metropolitan Assembly bylaws. Whilst also exposing our dear service providers to citywide customer services through a mobile application service. The assembly can now track sanitation services rendered to the general public and operators groups within the city to ensure conformity to the metro bylaws and eliminate incidents of citywide indiscriminate dumping of fatal sludge. Meanwhile, the founder of ISIS Paul engineer Dominic Abwaji said the objective of this digital platform is to help eliminate incidences of dumping wastewater in unapproved locations within the city as well as check the supply of non-potable water to homes as if potable. The program set forth with the following objectives. Number one, linking households to safe pit emptying services and bulk water supply services within Tamale Metropolis. Number two, to link these operators also to citywide customers via a mobile device. Number three, the program also sought to eliminate incidences of dumping wastewater in unapproved locations within the city as well as checking the supply of non-portable water to homes as if it's portable. Water use must be fit for purpose. And lastly, the program sought to promote occupational health and safety in the emptying and the water supply. The director of waste management at the Temale Metropolitan Assembly Engineer Martin Alohu on this part said the e-platform will help solve some of the sustainable development goals that Ghana has signed on to. It has the ability to solve some of the sustainable development goals that the country have signed on to. And by 2030, would have wished that this will propel our metropolitan assembly to a better pedestal, in fact, to the apex of innovation of this kind, where we want to solve sanitation problems. If you look at the SDG Goal 3 and 6, then to 8, the requests actually satisfy all the Let's do some other stories now. The executive director of the African Center for Health Policy Research and Analysis, Dr. Thomas Anaba, is urging the government to set up funds for emergency conditions at the various hospitals. According to him, this will help ease pressure on patients to pay bills before they are tended to despite the urgency of their conditions. Dr. Anaba made the call in an interview with MX24 News. Emergencies, at least, to have some amount of cover, like in the UK, like in other developed countries, for some number of hours until the person is actually fit, whether he has insurance or not. You see, 
people rush to emergency and many of our uh, patients suffer at the emergencies because they don't have outright money to take care of the emergency care. Mm -hmm. I would think that we have to really look at how we handle emergency in Ghana and make sure that some funding is dedicated for it, especially road traffic accidents and then the rest. Right. Some special funding is dedicated for it to take care of those people so people don't really suffer complications at emergency and now go to court and die. So I would say we should look at how to fund emergency so that every Ghanaian should be covered for some number of hours at the emergency department before they move into the ward or whatever. That is what I would suggest. Dr. Or else Thomas. Art services and art services and art services. And at the end, we are not paying and we go back to the same uh, 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 point. And now the Minister for Public Enterprises, Joseph Kujo, says government is in the process of liquidating some state entities that have become liabilities to the state. According to him, the decision is part of steps taken by the government to restructure the public enterprises portfolio to prevent further investment of resources in defunct state enterprises. According to the minister, 17 state entities have become defunct and have therefore become liabilities to the state and thus decisions have been made to either liquidate, list them on the Ghana stock exchange market, call for strategic investment or dispose them depending on their current state. He was speaking at a press briefing earlier today at the Ministry of Information. Restructuring the restructuring of the active um, companies at the policy level decisions have been made on entities that we intend we intend to liquidate liquidate means just uh, collapse them yeah, well, this comes through our study of uh, their current situation and then making the projection and realizing that they are just siphoning money from government pays and have become liabilities rather than assets. There are some, upon the review, we intend listing them on the stock market because it is possible to uh, get the investing public, Ghanaians, having equity stakes in them. Next corporate action, we have plan to undertake as invitation of strategic investors into some of the um, some of the entities so that we we'll have government sharing ownership with uh, Ghanaian investors who may be interested and some of them like I said the defunct or inactive companies planned disposal through an appropriate um, and transparent means to get them to get these liabilities offloaded from uh, government obligations. I will take you through, maybe I know Ghanaians sometimes, or a lot of the times, get so incensed when you think, when you talk about divestiture, disposal, and so on of state assets. But I want to appeal to our reasoning in this matter. You look at the pictures that follow in this presentation. Okay, would you call this an asset of government or you call it a liability of government? Um, when you look at, for example, a Boso glass factory, the central stores, the first picture on the left, that's central stores. What will you store there as a national asset? The minister also noted that further improvements have been made to ensure total compliance within the state enterprise. He said that the ministry will single out entities that are making losses and demand turnaround plans from them to ensure that they also do not become liabilities to the state. Going forward, I say we are aiming at further improvement in the compliance because we want to achieve total compliance we haven't gotten there because like i said out of the 128 we had up to 95 opening up in accounting that we desire and then um if you look at the portfolio i've said 17 defunct 175 active on siga register the next step is um what i'll say you want to zero in into the enterprises individually and require turnaround.
from those that are making losses, give us a turnaround plan to turn around the loss making into a profitability. And this is something that would, is going to require my attention as we go into the entities individually. And also to bring parliamentary oversight. Want, we've started, um, I wrote to parliament, we started invoking the oversight powers of parliament, that is um, Committee on um, Employment, Social Welfare and State Enterprises. This is a parliamentary select committee. I, I'm in touch with them and invoking the oversight powers also on the specified entities. So all SIGA is doing, uh, Parliament is also on that side, also inviting the enterprises to account. Let's bring you some more stories. The National Executive Council of the New Patriotic Party, NPP, says it will deliberate on the recommendations made by the vetting committees of the party before July 20, before the special electoral college. The report on the vetting process for the party's presidential aspirants, which took place from the 3rd to the 6th of July, was submitted to the executive's council of the party on Monday, July 10, 2023. The committee in its report declared all 10 aspirants for the upcoming special electoral college uh, election, but made certain recommendations that the National Executive Council would have to consider before the Special Electoral College in August. The vetting committee of the new Patriotic Party, NPP, has cleared all 10 presidential aspirants who went through the process for the upcoming Special Electoral College. The committee vetted 10 aspirants who picked and submitted their nomination to contest in the party's upcoming presidential primaries. The report of the committee on the process was submitted to the National Executive Council through the General Secretary Justin Frimpong-Kodria on Monday, July 10, 2023. In the report, the committee recommended all 10 aspirants as eligible to participate in the upcoming presidential primaries subject to the approval of the National Council. The 10 include former Trade and Industry Minister Alan Kweju Tremantin, Energy expert Kweju Puku, Vice President Dr. Al Haji Mahmoud Baumia, former Energy Minister Boachi Tremanti Ejako, former General Secretary Kwabina Eje Ejapo, Member of Parliament for Asin Central Kennedy Ohini Ejapo, former Member of Parliament for Offensive of Dr. Kofi Kunedu Apraku, former Agri Minister Dr. Uusu Efri Yakutu, former Minister for Railways Development. Joe Gatti and former MP for Mampon Francis Adenimo. In a statement issued by the General Secretary of the Party, Justin Frimpong Kodria, the National Council of the Party is scheduled to deliberate on the vetting committee's recommendations on Thursday, July 20, 2023. And our executive director of the Savannah Women Integrated Development Agency, Sweda, Hajia Alima Sajito, says the implementation of laws of Ghana has contributed to the limitation on the potentials of women in the country. According to her, although the laws of the land do not discriminate against any gender, its inability to be targeting enough sometimes puts women at a disadvantage when they are being implemented. Haji Alima Sajita was speaking to MX24 News on the commemoration of this year's World Population Day. I think it is very true that there is no law that says that uh, even our constitution does not promote uh, discrimination and we've also signed on to a lot of international conventions. So we just cannot even do any law that will discriminate against anybody. But the systems as we are currently operating, Indirectly, it is limiting women because of the social setting that we, we, we find ourselves, because of the patriarchal nature of our, our society. We are always in the situation where we are at a disadvantage, not because laws are put us at a disadvantage, but because practices, behaviors, attitudes, and character is what has put us at that disadvantage. There are so many barriers that is limiting us, not because laws have limited us, but it's because also the laws, when it comes to the actual implementation as to people who are at fault, it, it also works against us. So that is where we find ourselves. Right. So it is true. There are no law in this country. It's discriminatory against any woman. But sometimes the laws are also very neutral. 
they are not targeting enough, given the fact that the reality on the ground is the fact that some sex, some gender group is at a disadvantage. Even beyond the gender groups that we normally look at are issues of intersectionality, which mm. is sometimes we want to divert, uh, open up the discussion in the area of gender who is at a disadvantage. You can even go deeper to realize that even the women that we say we are at disadvantage, when you look at the intersectional part of it, you realize that even more women who are in another category of group are even more disadvantaged than the general women that we normally see. Now, a state funeral will be held tomorrow for Ghana's celebrated playwright Ama Ata Edu, who died last month at age 81. The funeral, which will be held at the State House on Thursday, July 13, is expected to have in attendance President Akufuado, several members of the government, statesmen, dignitaries in the entertainment industry, as well as persons who have been touched by her life. Ama Ata Edu is known for her classic books such as The Dilemma of a Ghost, Changes, No Sweetness Here, Our Sisters Kill Joy, among others. Her first work, The Dilemma of a Ghost, a play, was published in 1965, making her the first African woman to publish a play. She went on to become one of Africa's best-known writers, inspiring many women and girls. Amata Edu was also an education minister from 18, 1982 to 1983 and won the Commonwealth Writers' Prize for her book, The Changes. In entertainment, Barbara Nye Okaili Nyakononi Showbiz as Ovi has criticized the lack of togetherness in the music industry of the country. According to her, her time in the industry has proven to her that there is no unity in Ghana's music industry. Meanwhile, Ovi says that if there is any artist she would love to collaborate with, it will be Black Sherry because she believes they share a similar emotional life journey. She spoke on Face the Fans on MX24 television. Really have an industry? I'm asking. I'm throwing the questions back at our people. Do we really have an industry? I beg you, with all due respect, I'm just asking. I don't, I don't want to say much about it, but that's it. I, I feel like the the togetherness of the one one. It no day, so there's something, no, no, we know they together. Maybe other people then get industry, but Ghana, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, I'm sorry to say. I'm sorry to announce to all of you, there is no industry. It will be black hole, not because he has the, the buzz right now, but I listened to his album. I'm sure it was, I, I think some time back, somebody said that um, he should try and do songs with me. I feel like there's something we have in common. I don't know. I don't know. I think he's about so much. The pain inside of him is similar to what I've also, I feel like we can do, we can do projects together. Trust me, we can. And funny enough, the producer who recorded the first sermon, Ghanaian, Ghanaian Stallion, he reached out strangely. So it means that he's seen something that's inside, inside of the guy and that same thing is inside of me. So we have to try and work together. Yeah, if you are listening to me, please. On the international front, the Russian Defense Ministry says the Wagner Mercenary Group has completed a handover of all of its military equipment to the regular Russian armed forces. According to the ministry statement on Wednesday, Wagner has given up to more than 2,000 weapons and other systems, including main battle tanks such as the T-90, T-80 and T-72B-3. Wagner has also handed over Grad and Eurogun multiple launch rocket systems. The transfer follows the abortive mutiny launched uh, by Wagner leader Yevgeny Prigozhin at the end of last month, four months before the failed mutiny, Prigozhin accused the Defense Ministry of starving Wagner of equipment and ammunition. After the failed mutiny, the Wagner fighters were given the option of signing contracts 
with the Russian Ministry of Defense joined Prigozhin in exile in Belarus or return home. Early on Wednesday, the Belarus Ministry of Internal Affairs said the country's special forces would carry out combat training with Wagner fighters, according to earlier state media reports. Now, although it remains unclear how many Wagner personnel have relocated to Belarus. And that's all for this evening's edition of MX24 News. Thank you so much for your company. But do log on to mx24online.com for more stories. My name is Adjoa Tenkrama Domina. Enjoy your evening. <music>